A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In our gospel today, we are told by Jesus that something monumental is going to happen, something that will change everything for everyone is going to happen. Jesus tells his disciples that he is going away, and this is the third time that he has told them this. Jesus told the, his disciples and apostles previously that he would die and rise from the dead and this he did three times and it came to happen and everything was different because of that now jesus tells us that he is going away what does this mean for us what is going to change because of this in our second reading saint john is granted a vision of the kingdom of God as it descends upon earth. And there's one thing that's strikingly missing from that vision, and that is that there is no temple. John, a Jew who became a Christian, was devoted to the temple as was any other Jew. But yet the temple in this vision was God the Father and the Son himself. St. John does not see that there is any building, any structure or edifice that could contain the presence of God. For John knows and understands the resurrection. When Jesus rose from the dead, he broke free from the, the tomb itself. He ascended from the depths of hell. And Jesus, the Son of God, was set loose in the world. Because of his resurrection, Jesus was free to roam the world and appear to whom and when he chose. But this creates a problem for all of us. We sometimes wish that Jesus would return to that state so that here and there he would appear. But Jesus has something much greater in mind. What Jesus did upon the resurrection was ascend to the Father. And the primary reason why he did that was that in ascending to the Father as the risen Son of God, what he offered to the Father was the gift of a redeemed humanity. The gift that the resurrected Lord gave to the Father in heaven was his children, humanity, freed from the shackles of death, freed from the chains of the slavery of sin. And this is why Jesus went to the Father. 
But Jesus went to the Father for another reason. It was his mission as the Son of God to come to humanity trapped in sin and death and reveal to humanity the great love of God the Father. The mission of the Son was to teach us everything about the Father, to teach us that he was our loving creator, to teach us the the tragedy of our break with him through the sin of Adam, and to teach us the great love with which the Father loves us, that love which propelled him to give his only begotten Son to us, to suffer and die on the cross. This was the mission of the Son. And in returning to the Father, what the Son declared was the completion of this mission. But there was a third reason why Jesus went to the Father. And that reason was that the Father and the Son would in a perfect unity give us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would do two things for us. First of all, the Spirit would reveal to us the fullness of the truth of God and God's love for us. It is through the Holy Spirit that we see the complete and the full Trinity. And the first mission of the Spirit is to reveal God to those who are united to Christ in baptism. But the second purpose of of the Holy Spirit was to teach us everything. And what the Spirit teaches us, first of all, is how to be disciples. We are the ones who have been joined to Christ in baptism. And in being joined to Christ, it has been revealed to us that God is present in our world and the love of God is to be found in our world. And the mission that we have received as the baptized of Jesus Christ is to proclaim this truth that God is here in our world. God's love is in our world. And we proclaim this by our words and by our deeds. It is by speaking the truth of God's love for us in Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it is by showing the love that Christ has given us that we show our discipleship. When those who don't understand what Christ did, when those who don't appreciate it, when those who don't experience the love of God come searching for these. They come to us, the baptized of Christ. And to be a disciple means that we live in that love of God. To be a disciple means that our lives are immersed in the presence of God who roams freely in our world. And to be a disciple means that we live and proclaim this. But the Holy Spirit also guides us in this, and the Spirit forms the community in which the presence of God and the love of God are found in their most perfect form. The second mission of the Spirit is to bind us together in a community of Christian love. And we see this work in our second reading today, we see how Paul and Barnabas guide and direct, focus and enrich the life and the Christian love of the Christian community. We manifest the presence of God and the love of God when we share that love with one another, when we express the forgiveness, the charity, the generosity, the faith, that we are called to by our Christian vocation, it is then that others can see that God is truly alive in our world. Jesus tells us not to fear his going away. He tells us not to fear his coming again. And in reality, we should rejoice that Christ goes away 
and that he comes again. Because before this happened, God was found in the temple at Jerusalem. Or God was found in the man Jesus, who briefly walked the paths of our earth. But now because Jesus has gone away, because the Son of God has gone to the Father, the presence of God is found throughout our world. And we now know and we understand what we must do. We are the disciples of the God who is present in our world. And our mission, our purpose in life is to proclaim that God. And we do this by our proclamation. We do this in our community of Christian love. So let us rejoice in what Jesus has done. Our destiny is with the Father as a redeemed people saved from sin and death. And our mission is to proclaim God's presence and love in a world that does not know him.